we'll uh, get things started with Andy. Hey, Doug, I know you guys still come out on, on the losing side tonight, but, but when you consider the, the halftime adjustment, I guess, compared to a couple of days ago against Ole Miss, I mean, how, how proud can you be of, of what you guys were able to do in that second half? Um, I mean, actually, we did better in the second half in Ole Miss. It was just a brutal game. But the uh, – again, I hate to use this term, but, you know, we're dead in the water in that first half. We can't do anything. It, we're so uncharacteristic in our transition defense. Uh, I mean, just I, – I can't even explain what we were doing. It was so out of character. Uh, we had three things down on the board that mattered on that defensive side and, and only three, because I didn't want them thinking about a lot. I want them focused. And obviously I didn't do a very good job because those three things, we were atrocious. And one was conversion defense, getting back and matched up. And then, you know, two was uh, post defense. And then three was rebounding and not in that order, but that's, the, that's their game. That's who they are. And I didn't want to cloud their heads to start the game with, but, but we were, uh, for whatever reason, uh, not quite ready to match their physicality. And, and again, we can't, some teams can, some teams can take a night off and still hang in there. We have to go above and beyond every night to stay in there and compete. And so when we start off like that, and not everything was as bad as it looked offensively, there was a couple of things that just laid around the rim and didn't go our way. But, but again, we had to have per perfect offense to score because even though uh, we weren't getting back on defense, we weren't rebounding either. So it's a tough combination. And then at halftime, uh, we just regrouped, gathered, went back to those three things and addressed them again in that order. And, and, and we came out and just fought and clawed and grabbed about every rebound that we could. You know, there was one segment, uh, a bunch of loose balls and we, we got, just got a little tired I probably needed a sub in there, but uh, I thought our effort was spectacular, uh, showed some toughness in any of the, the uh, aftermath of the old Miss game, kind of got washed away. And it's fun to watch kids get lost in a game and they got lost in the game in a positive way. And they're pulling for each other and they're, they're making each other better and they, and they hurt in that locker room afterwards, as, as they should, because when you invest that much, there should be pain and there should be hurt. And uh, I, I was very proud of what we did in that second half. When, when you say you, you guys regrouped at, at halftime in the, in the locker room there, what, how exactly do you go about that process from, you know, 27 down in the second, half, in the second quarter, excuse me, to, to you know, hey, let, let's, let's make a run and, and kind of uh, suddenly you're up by one with 47 seconds or whatever it was. How many down were we? You were down by 27 in the second quarter. Well, good thing my math's bad. I mean, that would uh, that could have uh, adjusted how I felt. No, it was – I've seen enough games. I mean, I just watched one the other night. A team is, is down 22 to nothing to start off the game. They end up winning by 16. And just shared that story quick. I mean, just anything to let them know it's not over. It's never over. Uh, you, you just in, you know, the other thing we had on the board is stay in the fight, regardless up 10 down 10, whatever that roller coaster takes us like stay in the fight. And, and I thought we did uh, again, cause it, it was no fun. And, and I've said this before, but we said that at halftime too. Like it can't be fun playing that game. It's not that fun coaching it. Stay in the fight, stay in the fight. You never, you never know. Robbie, go ahead. Coach, you mentioned yesterday just how difficult it, it was going to be to defend Jenna Stady, and she had eight points in 23 minutes. She was pretty much a non-factor late in that ball game. I know she was on the bench, but how did you feel like y'all executed defending her in this ball game? Yeah, I, I thought we did okay. Uh, again, the rebounding just just killed us early, uh, and, and again, we committed a, another man to help guard her you know, another position so that we were kind of spying off of a player. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, she's, she's a heck of a talent and, and, and has us by a few inches and a few pounds of strength and base. And, and, I, and I thought we did a pretty good job. And, and then maybe we made it difficult on the other end, which we need to do. We can't always just talk about what we don't have. 
we've got to be able to uh, take advantage of what we do have. And so maybe she's not as mobile guarding a ball screen or some other coverages that she needs to do. So maybe they have to take her out. I don't know. What was your message to the team after this game? I know everybody wants to, to win a game like this, but to, to be down in this game 27 points and pretty much left for dead there and to come back and have a chance to win the ball game, was this, a, was this a good teaching moment and a good step forward, you feel like, for your team? Yeah, usually right after a game, I've, I've never seen a really good teaching moment. It's more just quickly address whatever emotions are going on. And then the next day when, when there's calmer minds, we can dissect it and, and go through it. But, but really my, my message was, cause they were hurting, you know, they were in their chairs and they're kind of, I mean, they, I know they were proud that they fought, but I said, you should feel that pain. You should hurt. Uh, because you invested so much and worked so hard to get to that point. The worst thing would be not to do what you did, to stay away from the pain, and you're just numb to the whole thing. You're just numb. It's just a game, whatever. We, it wasn't our night, and you're numb. That's what scares me the most, and, and there was none of that uh, in our team. And, and that pain, we, I know I don't want it. They don't want it. But, but we're not going to run away from it, and we're going we're to acknowledge why we have it is because they gave everything they got, and we fell short. It happens. Uh, it's unfortunate. We don't like it. But if we're going to go down, we're going to go down swinging like that. Stefan, go ahead. Hey, Doug. Uh, it was a little difficult to see from, from where we sit over here, but um, I think after Georgia regained the lead, I think Danae had a, had a shot inside. Did, did she have an open look there that she kind of turned away? And then on top of that, what did you think of the look uh, Rakia had at the end? Yeah, it, it wasn't a great look that we got Rakia at the, at the very end. Uh, but she was, I mean, she was two for two at that point. Uh, yeah, Danae just turned, and, and she's young, and she played her tail end off. And uh, she turned probably expecting somebody to be on her. And, and she was trying to find someone else to, to, uh, to kick out to. And, and because she's so unselfish, uh, sometimes she forgets to look at that basket. And, and she had some really nice drives and, and attacked the elbows. And, and she's becoming a better scorer every day. Uh, it, it is fun watching her growth and development. So, yeah, she probably turned and didn't see the basket because of, of too much unselfishness, and she could have turned and just shot it or gotten to the rim. They had uh, dominated you guys in points in the paint in the first half. I think in the second half it was 28 to 12 you guys in, in points in the paint. Do, do you feel like you guys were getting good looks throughout the afternoon and maybe just making some more there in the second half, or I should say throughout the evening? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I don't want to say that we just were cold in that first half. I mean, there was some uh, – they do a nice job of collapsing and they do have some nice length to, uh, to protect that rim. And so if we're just flying in there at five, six, trying to maybe shoot over somebody instead of keeping your dribble alive and maybe redirecting or going underneath the basket and getting some kick outs, some inside outs, we made better decisions. We should have made some of those in the first half for sure. But in the second half, I thought we made better decisions of whether to get your hand towards the glass or keep your dribble alive and redirect it until you find somebody open or maybe our post is ceiling so you can get, you know, a clean look at the basket instead of getting it blocked. We'll wrap things up with Andy and Courtney. Hey, real quick for me, I uh, started asking this question. I just wondered, do, do you know if and when Malika Willis might be able to return to the bench for you guys? Uh, no, I don't have any comments on that. Thank you. Courtney, Courtney go ahead. Coach, just compared to what you saw from your team when you guys played Ole Miss last weekend, how much do you feel like this team just grew over the course of the last few days and as well as this game? Um, I mean, it, it looked like it. It felt like it. I hate to make broad sweeping comments like, like yeah, we got it because I don't know what tomorrow brings. I just were ready to attack it in, in – uh, you know, again, you you keep throwing these these moments together where you've competed and you've stayed in the fight. It's very important to us, and it's very important to to our coaching staff to to keep that mindset 
uh, going forward because it's the only chance we have. And again, we can't, we, we just, our margin for error is small, we know that. Uh, so we have to be so focused and so committed uh, and, and it can take a toll. It can take a toll when you, when you have to work that hard all the time. It's not like we can just stand there sometimes and the rebound comes to us. I mean, Danae Carter and Rakia and Annie boxing out. I mean, it, it they're workhorses in what they're doing. And, um, and again, they just can't take any breaks from that. So, so I hope uh, that, that, that it is, it's continual growth uh, for us. Thanks, everybody.